So I found this disc on eBay. It's in Atari ST format uh, for the DX72. I'm a patch junkie, so I have to have it, of course. Here's all the ways I failed to read it, uh, and probably some that I actually have forgot to list. Uh, so I have this, um, which hopefully we'll get at the old format 720K disc. Um, the disc was not readable in the floppy drive of uh, this gateway, not immediately at least, not in DOS. Uh, but if you get TOSBox, you can probably read this disc. Now, again, this is not the only way to do this, but this was the only way I could do it without spending uh, a whole bunch of money on an Atari ST. So, you are now in TOSBox, you're gonna hit Control shift q and that's gonna take you to uh, this utility menu. You wanna hit F to mount the disc. And it doesn't actually even mount it. What it does is it copies it into a some sort of RAM drive. But you click there. Oh, and there are the files. Okay. Um, all in little folders. Your DX7 sounds in Atari format. Um, so then what you need to do is go to the, your C drive. Create a new folder. No, yeah. And name it whatever you want. Um, just ignore that I'm calling it TX802. Um, so there's the destination folder. Um, I'm going to click on that. Um, okay, and then in here, we're going to copy over. Just doing the. Oh, yeah, okay, that still works. So drag and drop. There's a little confirmation menu. Hit OK. And there they go. Now, can we get these out of this computer, uh, given that it has no Ethernet port and only the floppy drive? Um, so we're going to quit out of TOS box, go back into just regular old DOS. I have formatted a new floppy, uh, a 1.44 in the drive, which I know my Mac can read with the USB drive. So we're literally just going to copy these files onto the floppy drive. I think this is in real time. Um, and then now we're going to bring... Oh, let's just check that it's... Yep, yeah, okay, everybody's there. And there you go. You don't need that PRG file. That's the downloader that is proprietary to sound source. So here's my floppy. I'm going to go put that in the Mac. Okay, and let's see if we get anything. Ah, okay. So, um, these are going to be folders filled with little sysx files, usually four or five or more. Um, and these are just, I think, generic sysx files. Sometimes you have to rename them for your sysx editor to see them. Now you can send them to your DX7, just like regular sysx files. Um, I would highlight all of them and then send them this particular librarian will send them one by one and the DX um, seems to be able to take that. Okay, so before you send your sounds over, you're going to want to turn off your memory protect, make sure your channels and device numbers match. Um, the receive block won't really matter unless it's a half bank. but. Um, yeah, then you hit play. This is in real time. It's going to send each message over and you can just wait. It's very exciting. Okay, and then you can check and there we go. There's soundtrack, uh, the sound bank. Load it in and here's some of the individual sounds. Um, something you may notice I did, I loaded them into bank 4 uh, on E, but um, you should really load them into bank 1 if you have an E, because the patches, the performances tend to call for the patches to be in bank 1. Um, so you may get some weird results otherwise. But uh, I hope this has answered questions for anyone, and um, tune in at an undisclosed date for another floppy adventure. If you like extremely esoteric sync videos, please like and subscribe.